Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Perspectives. Welcome to our first guest here, uh, Afal. Uh, we are very pleased to have you here. As Thank you me. know, uh, you have been a, quite a long standing health advocate and health administrator in our country. And uh, so, for a person who has been sitting on both sides of the fence, so to say, You've been in the ministry, and now you have your job in the in the private sector, mm -hmm. in the hospital systems. Um, you have a wide perspective of this, and I would like to ask you just a simple question to begin with. What about the health situation in Maldives? From the time you were in the health sector to now, do you see the change? First of all, let me um, thank you both for inviting me to the program. Um, and it's a very broad question, but uh, a broad perspective, I would say, um, to, to talk about the current health system and how, um, you know, the health has evolved. And also, it's a bit flattering for me to sit in front of both of you uh, <laughs> to, to talk about this. Uh, however, um, I would say um, we have had a lot of changes um, in our health system, like anywhere else over the many years um, that we have um, been working in the health system. Um, even if, I, if you look at me, for example, I've been in the system for more than 20 years now, which seems to be a long time. Yes, yes uh, indeed. And uh, so many things have changed. Um, how um, people relate to health, how people think what health is, um, how people seek health care or how people try to prevent health care. All of these um, things have changed. Um, when we started um, also, there, is a, there were a lot of um, community involvement in, in the health system, in, the, in, in health care. It may not be to that extent in, uh, in more urban areas even at that time, but um, there were a lot of participation. Um, let's look at one example. Let's say, for example, malaria. We enjoy a malaria-free country. Recently, we, get, uh, we got official certification right. uh, to be a malaria-free country. The work to eliminate mal malaria or eradicate malaria was a huge community effort. People really did participate. People took, uh, you know, mosquito control as a responsibility. Now, if you relate that to current situation where we have an endemic dengue situation, which we have never been able to figure out how we can get rid of it, how the community can participate, it's more perceived as um, by people as well as something that the systems, the governments should intervene. That is the responsibility where somebody gives you a mosquito control, which is not the case, in fact. I think you have uh, brought a very interesting point. May I intervene here? I think the uh, attitude of the people, don't you think the way they look at life, don't you think these things have an influence on the behavior of people? A lot. Towards the responsibilities. Normally, True. they used to be a very active yeah. player. It, 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 it's a lot of change. Again, um, you know, the, the, the aspect of uh, families and the communities, how um, you are brought up also. It, it, it's a combined number of factors. And also what we have done over the years is health care has become more institutionalized than from communities. So there has been a shift, a huge shift in the whole health uh, seeking and service provision paradigm, both. I think Afal has brought up a very interesting point as regards the, the participation of the people in the urban context. As you know, anywhere else also, if, as you get urbanized, you become less involved. Invo involved, but less involved, I would yes. say. I would say less involved because the sense of community is not so much there mm. in the urban context. So as before, when we had malaria programs, TB leprosy, mm. all those, there was a community effort at the island levels. Exactly. And as people move to urbanized situations, as you say, mm. you expect to be given something rather than mm. seeking it themselves. So I think that's a part. But but that was because of the idea of community uh, being involved in a preventive process also. 
right? Yes. I, I think that has changed now. Do you, do you see that uh, situation? A lot of change have, now? Yes. Um, in fact, we seek healthcare for a lot of things um, that we can manage on our own, uh, that we don't necessarily need to go to a hospital. It's, you know, not always very healthy to go to a hospital for everything. Um, your headaches or your little finger cuts and things like that, you don't really need to seek a professional doctor's opinion um, on, on some of these things. There are ways, there are remedies, there are um, changes in your behavior. For example, a cold can be treated by changing your sleep patterns, perhaps. Um, so there are simple things that we need to learn and, and uh, as much as possible to stay away from you know, seeking m more medical care. Because the moment you get a cold, you, um, you will probably get a lot of medications. And medications right. are not necessarily right. <laughs> too healthy for you either, uh, just like your um, just like your foods and things like that. And so you, you're right. When you go to a doctor, <laughs> you, he is compelled to give you some medicine and a few tests also. Exactly. But actually, as you say, you can do a gargle or a salt water or a very true. Gargle. Yeah. Before you can take it away or control it, and most of these things, as they say, I understand they are the viral infection, especially mm -hmm. you can't really treat them. But uh, you're right. Good, for, good, good to see yeah, you uh, say this from a hospital. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, he's he's realistic. I, right. I think uh, that's what we would like uh, every one of us to be. You know, uh, because there is a primary responsibility to start with to be healthy exactly. and not to have to go to a doctor. Mm -hmm. And there are responsibilities by playing one's individual role. Mm -hmm. You are also permeating beyond yourself to, to the people around you. Mm -hmm. So we adopt a, a healthy lifestyle, mm -hmm. which we are going to be talking about a, a bit later, I think. Yeah. Now, how would you describe this transition uh, the thinking that for every little thing we should be going to a doctor. From uh, dealing with it yourself, be self-reliant. Many factors. Um, one, I would say, let's say um, availability, per se. Um, it would be much more easier to see your GP in the Maldives than for you to see your GP in the US or even in, in the United Kingdom. Yes. Uh, much easier, much quicker, and uh, that is something obviously which has driven us to go to these people. Over the years, the system has been changing where it has oriented to a more medicalized model of service provision. So we have slowly detached ourselves from the preventive aspects. Um, a lot of the awareness creations, you know, a lot of um, supporting mechanisms for, for people who actually have good healthy behaviors and things like that as well. Let's say, um, for example, even with in the current scenario for insurance systems which are built to seek health care, if you look at the figures alone, 70 to 80 percent of the expenditure goes actually on outpatient care in hospitals, which is in fact what should not happen. Which means if you have a limit or if you have an allocation when you really get sick and if you really need to pay off a hefty bill, you don't have anything left to pay it as well. So which means the, uh, the system itself is not oriented very healthy, but rather if the system is oriented in a way where you get a, you know a bigger cover for example for real illnesses mm -hmm. less people will seek health care for smaller illnesses which they will manage on their own mm -hmm. can we leave here I think you have raised a very good important good point, point. Go back. Uh, i think uh, yeah. let's take a break and come yeah. back you have raised a very interesting point uh, please be with us we'll be back with you in a short while Welcome back to our program. Before we went for the break, we were talking with uh, Ahmed Afal, mm -hmm. uh, the managing director of uh, ADK Hospitals, and um, we were broaching the idea of prevention. And so we can take it from there. A question that we had on our mind was, 
how much of prevention are we doing in the health services sector in Maldives? And what are the kinds of programs that are more relevant now than the time that you would have been in the health sector? Well, uh, I would say, you know, the intensity of uh, public health programs or prevention programs are less um, uh, compared to uh, many years ago. Um, again, um, that leads to the fact that, you know, the whole health system has been pretty much institutionalized. Um, a lot of health seeking behavior is what we have been promoting. Um, we, and, and that is one, one of the big reasons why that has happened. But like a, any other country with development, um, with changes in lifestyle, we are no exception. We tend to believe we are a very unique kind of people, but we in fact are all human beings, uh, which means we are prone to whatever any other human being is prone to. Um, our lifestyles have changed a lot. Um, we have uh, very unhealthy habits. Um, uh, one single example I would probably quote is that of smoking, f let's say. Um, if you look at a very simple way of, um, you know, projecting how much we smoke in this country, I would take um, a Maldivian population of, let's say, 1.5 million people. That includes all the tourists, um, all the uh, expatriates who work here, plus the Maldivian population, just over 330, 340,000 people. If you compare that 1.5 million population to, um, you know, the number of cigarettes that is imported to this country, which stands around 300 million sticks per year. Really? Uh, which means um, if even 100% of this uh, 1.5 million people smoked, that means it's 20 packs per person per year. Which means, uh, like, and I would say about a prevalence of 40% would be smoking in this country. Oh, or some more. people say more than that also. Yeah, probably yeah. more than yeah. that. On top of that, um, the imports of energy drinks, um, which is again um, very high sugar. Uh, we do not not everybody is very mobile or um, have a lifestyle which is very uh, a moving lifestyle but more sedentary but we take all of these that we should not be taking and as a result of that we fall into hospitals with heart attacks in 40 years 30 years now we mm. see working in very a hospital people, huh? a lot of young people suddenly dying I, I think you have raised a number of very, very important questions here. Uh, I think we should give a thought to all these points which are so relevant to us. Number one, that we have become very mobile, but not exactly mobile. mobile. <laughs> we, we wish to find the fastest vehicle even to drive around in 1.5 square kilometers. Very true. That is a change of lifestyle. What we eat, we eat the wrong food, too much of it. And smoking, uh, it's a fashion. And th the fashion has more or less robbed our pockets to such a degree. Sure. And I think uh, Maldives could be champions if the mm. way we are going in our region as number of smokers. Oh, that's Sounds a long word to use. <laughs> <laughs> Sad to say, but yeah, this is, yeah, this yeah, is yeah, a right. fact. Yeah. Because I, I think according to the statistics we get from the region, uh, our performance is not very good. No. And uh, the change of lifestyle, this is what concerns us. The change of lifestyle, we have to really sit down and think about what we are doing. Is this development or is it for the better lifestyle that we are looking for? Well, that question has to be uh, discussed, but I, I don't know how much we can broach it today. Yeah. But the thing is, there is this thing called globalization. Right. Mm -hmm. And as we become exposed to the outside world, to the communication that comes from outside, the uh, big uh, advertisements, and the cigarette companies, I mean, I, this is a, a subject close to my heart also, so the, the, the companies spend billions on advertising and changing the minds of people. So even though we may have many, many restrictive uh, things happening, still I think their part of the game is actually the winning thing. So uh, as a person who's been working in this area, Afal, you have been, I think, uh, taking part in international meetings and, 
even WHO, I think you have had some involvement. And your passion, I understand, is also this as a continuing thing besides your job. So can you tell us more about that? What are the, what, are, what prognosis for the future? Um, actually, there are many ways to go about it. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of early interventions were uh, um, awareness creation. Well, people are aware. We all know. Yet, we cannot change our behavior. Um, so we need other interventions. Um, one of the biggest conventions now that we have in the world is the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, mm -hmm. um, the World Health Organization, which has, uh, which has actually I I is a record convention in, in, ter in terms of the speed which was uh, ratified by the countries and how it became uh, international law, um, which requires, um, apart from all the different aspects, including, um, you know, the awareness creation, the cessation mechanisms, the research, um, disclosure of products. There's one more important thing, uh, which are the laws. Um, we in the Maldives have a very weak tobacco control law. Um, the law is so weak that the regulations that could follow that law cannot be stronger than the law itself, which we, which is which is a very important <coughs> point that we had to look into. In developed countries and many developing countries, even closer to us, places like India, for example, even Sri Lanka, have come up with very stringent laws where you know the trade, the distribution, the advertisement, everything is pretty much um, now streamlined in, in, into a number of controls, which is eventually leading to reduced consumption. What we don't understand is actually the burden, not only the healthcare burden and the productivity burden by people getting sick is increasing, but the financial burden for all the economies, all the governments are becoming big because we may take you know, the benefit, some people may say the economic benefits of sales and taxes, and all of these things. But yet, the trade control point of view would need to be um, regulated much stronger in order to come to a situation where we have a win-win-win situation, which means we get, for example, the price. If we get the prices higher, some people would say consumption will not go lower. It, yes. will, it will go lower, and <coughs> it is proven <coughs> even in Maldives. Um, which means less consumption, the vulnerable people will get less exposure, people's productivity increases, which actually eventually helps, you know, reduce uh, the health budget okay. or, the, the, or the amount of money that you spend from the state on health. In other words, uh, we have a situation which, is, which has evolved into a totally complex um, set of problems. Exactly. We have uh, more or less <coughs> involuntarily created this. Uh, I, I think uh, a subject of this nature requires a lot of discussion, but unfortunately our time doesn't permit. We have come to the end of the program, mm -hmm. and uh, we wish to thank you for participating right, with us welcome. and uh, uh, giving your views and very sincere and very valuable points of view. And uh, we wish to thank you and uh, our spectators yeah. who have been watching us. Welcome back to the program. Yes, on this segment of the program, we have Aisat Samia. She is the Deputy uh, Director General of uh, Planning and International Health in, in the, the Ministry, Ministry of, of Health. Health. Yes, and we are very glad to have you. I am glad that we can spend some time with you. Let me start with a question, uh, Samia. You are the planner of our country for health. <laughs> so in that regard, what are the priorities that you have now in this uh, next coming planning phase? Let, let me correct. Uh, one of the planners uh, working with the senior management team okay, okay. in the Ministry of Health. Well, well you're very <laughs> modest to say that. Yeah, that's OK. Uh, currently. Uh, we, uh, we are at a stage where uh, globally a lot, a lot is happening. Uh, 
we have moved from uh, millennium development goals to uh, sustainable development goals. Uh, we have a long term non-communicable diseases global plan. We have a regional uh, NCD plan. Uh, so in the country, uh, we are looking at these uh, international uh, goals, international targets, the regional targets, and the national uh, national diseases burden, the changes at a national level. Uh, we've got uh, a new health master plan coming up. Uh, the old master plan is uh, 2006 to 2015 is over. Uh, so we have a lot of work going on in terms of planning. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we have a lot of uh, targets uh, for health at a national level. Uh, currently, we have one tertiary hospital. Uh, there is a plan to develop tertiary facilities in uh, two of the region. This is to move services closer to the people. Yes. Uh, previously, uh, we've, uh, we, for a very long time, uh, we, we were working on community pharmacies, uh, but we were working very much uh, with the private sector in terms of uh, uh, availability or accessibility, ensuring the accessibility of pharmaceuticals to the different islands or to the population. But uh, okay. in the recent one or two years, uh, we worked closely with STO. We've established uh, pharmacies in all the inhabited now, islands. Now, uh, you have referred to an interesting uh, uh, point, which is non-communicable diseases, which is the next challenge to the rest of the world, not only to us. How are we be looking at it now? Where do we stand now? We, have, we, we were focusing a lot, uh, World Health Organization, countries, uh, even Maldives, uh, on uh, controlling communicable diseases for a very long time. We've come a long way. We've achieved a lot. Uh, uh, when you look at the communicable diseases, uh, a number of communicable diseases, because of the work of healthcare workers over the years, uh, we've seen that because of primary healthcare over the years, we've seen that uh, a lot of the diseases are controlled uh, a lot. Uh, and on the elimination word, very recently we've seen that Maldives received malaria-free certification. Right. Being the first in the Southeast Asia region to receive the cert this certification, we are working on filaria certification for Maldives. Uh, so we've achieved a lot, uh, but there's re-emergent communicable diseases yes. as well. Uh, yes. But non-communicable diseases, the burden from uh, the the disease burden from non non-communicable diseases is much much higher now much higher, yes. so if you look at the burden even in Maldives uh, the burden is about 78 percent in, in Maldives Maldives really? yes that so it's very very high burden if you look at the mortality statistics for Maldives mm -hmm. you see uh, cardiovascular diseases so heart diseases are at the very top uh, respiratory diseases are f following so there's right. it's a very very high burden area. so in other words these are the res this is the result of change of lifestyle sedentary lifestyle right, right. Uh, we uh, dietary uh, habits dietary habits yes uh, uh, so, so in your then next plan what are the kinds of uh, interventions that you have planned this, for yeah. so this is the way even globally where the world is going uh, i've mentioned that we've got a global ncd action plan uh, we've also got a regional uh, ncd action plan we've got a c uh, country level uh, NCD, NCD non-communicable disease. Non-communicable yes. disease action plan, uh, yes. country level. Currently, we are at the stage where uh, we are costing the NCD uh, plan because a plan mm -hmm. is really uh, the easier component to, to draft a plan, but to implement the plan is very hard. Yeah, NCD, very hard. Very hard. NCD being uh, uh, an area where you have to work with other sectors. Exactly. Yeah, yes. This is not very clear cut. Like Going all the way to schools. Right. Yes. Starting from schools and then going the entire strata of the community. So this is related to what you eat, your exercise. Uh, if, if Do you smoke or not? So Be before we go to that, I just want to focus on, let's say our viewers may like to know what non-communicable disease, why is you call it non-communicable disease? Yes, I think uh, perhaps some mm -hmm. of our uh, spectators might wish to know wh what, how do we apply this? what becomes a non-communicable disease as? It's, it's more related to your lifestyle. Uh, it's In other words, not caused by a germ. No. Oh, that's yeah. right. So, that's so I, it's more to do with your lifestyle. Uh, so uh, diseases like 
cardiovascular diseases, diseases like cancer, even mental health diseases. So it's there's a wide spectrum of diseases under the non-communicable diseases. It's very hard. Uh, it takes a long time, so it's more chronic in nature. Uh, so uh, if you look at the healthcare expenditure, even it will take a longer term for you to kill. So mm -hmm. it's, so more, it's complex, a lot more expensive and complex. More, huh? more complex. It involves other sectors, exactly. more work. So uh, I think one of the things, as you say, is uh, working with other sectors. Now, I think in programs like the Health Environment Program, for instance, and even if you look at any of these uh, non-communicable diseases, as you say, the diabetes program or the, or the heart diseases, cancers, how do, uh, what are the ways you're going to plan? Uh, you're a planner, so how do you deal with, uh, with other sectors? Currently under the uh, non-communicable... Are, are, they, are they coming? To help you with this, under the that's the, it's the most complex uh, mm -hmm. issue. So to implement something by ourselves, by the health sector, would be the easier. But then to work with all the other sectors would be more complex because you have to get their support. You have to yeah. work with them. Mm -hmm. uh, the activities in our NCD or National uh, Non-Communicable Diseases Action Plan should be in the other sectors. Uh, action plan as well because this goes beyond the health sector as we've discussed uh, just now. So it. It takes a longer time, uh, but the good thing is uh, we can build on the expertise from the other sectors. Uh, Are there any good plans you may, any, any programs that you can allude to or mention that's happening with the other sectors? Uh, one, one of the things that's quite new, uh, which, which we've introduced, uh, for, to, uh, but it, it, it has been there for uh, two years, is the urban primary health care concept. Uh, so. Uh, Previously, uh, we used to have good programs in the communities who, who or in the islands. In yes. uh, education. So, depending on the programs that are run uh, in the urban care facilities, uh, ov even globally, what we see is with the with these changes, with globalization, with urbanization, we tend to focus. Uh, there's less focus on the primary health care. Uh, prevention programs or the promotion programs for the urban health care. We tend to neglect more of curative care in the urban care setting. So, but then the, we can't neglect the uh, preventive, the health promotion aspect of the urban uh, urban population itself. So, in Mali, we introduce urban primary health care center. The programs that are run in the urban health care uh, uh, in the center uh, runs with the different uh, with the different sectors. So, uh, yeah. so you have so education, yeah. So if you want to target specific programs to uh, school, so school uh, people, sure. uh, yeah, children. I think, you know, you have uh, referred to something very important. I think we should elaborate in the second half of this uh, segment because we have come to the end of our first segment of uh, your interview. And uh, we really appreciate that you have brought out something very important for our audience. Do stay with us. We'll be back with you shortly. Welcome back. Uh, can I elaborate again on what we started? I think uh, when we finished, uh, we talked about how the non-communicable non disease yes, requires yes. a lot more partnerships with other sectors. Uh, from the little I know about this health sector, <laughs> I think the area of health and environment, you know, because the environmental program deals with many other sectors. And I think you've done a very good job to bring people together. But I'm sure there are lots of challenges. Even if you can get people together, how do you move forward from there on? What do you think are the main challenges here? In, in the environmental health area, uh, we we have some projects. So, uh, like the Lecrae project. So the, all the UN agencies. That's in Lamatol. Yes. So the UN agencies and the government, uh, different sectors contributing to this program, working together, and focusing on Lamu. So focusing on some one one island or some areas, so that you would see a difference. Set a trend. Yes. yes. So you would see a difference. Other otherwise, there are smaller programs. We used to work on very small small activities where you don't see an impact. But when you have a lot of activities focused on one area or one island, you would see a lot a Changes lot more. Happening. Yes. We see this happening. So you get the, the people yes. also on board then. Yes. And then it will be a model of how you work together, UN agencies, different sectors. Mm -hmm. If you have some good examples, then you can re rep repeat this in other areas as so well. So the Lecrae is 
part of this? It's happening right now. Uh, so there's a group, uh, there's a committee overseeing uh, the implementation. Yes. And all the sectors, different sectors contributing, like health, we have certain activities, uh, environment ministry, uh, UN agencies, each UN agency overseeing the different components with the ministry. Oh, it's, it's a multi-agency yes. uh, program. I think it's a very good example of yes. how we can work together and maybe at the end of the program, when we look at uh, how we've done, what, what, what are the lessons we've learned from the program, we would know a lot uh, of how to implement similar program in other areas. Right. So, so the Advanced Program is a very good example to show others how many sectors have to work have, together. Yes. But yes. then on, on things like diabetes, for instance, smoking, uh, smoking is an is a indicator of, let's say, it's a, it's a me mechanism by which you get a disease. So you get heart disease, for instance, or you get lung cancer, or you get diabetes, uh, mellitus. Now, all these have causes, right? All these have causes, and as we said, all these are many of this is uh, related to the lifestyle. So there, how are your programs planned to get all these sectors together? The education uh, sector this, this is, this is also this a is really big partner. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, specifically uh, in the in the re like last year, you've seen that there's there was a huge program, uh, so like a campaign. Uh, because uh, this comes with behavior change. So yes. you need to reach the people mm. to bring out a difference. Reaching is very difficult. Uh, in a way, uh, but there are advantages also currently because the social people use a lot of social media in the country. So you have to use different methods. Uh, people watch TV. Uh, there's a lot of uh, people watching uh, different channels. So this is also an area where you can tap in. Maybe no, not to use the traditional methods, mm. but you can conventional Some methods. Some innovations you have yes. to use. But, but you say that health promotion uh, plays a very big part. Uh, right? You For have that. to use, yeah, you have to yes. use different methods. Like recently we see in the HIV AIDS, we, we are looking at an app, a phone app, because mm. everybody has phone. So a oh, phone yes. app where you can assess, you can do a self-assessment, and then which will also prompt you to do the testing, which the is self, needed, yes. yeah. Oh, so th you have to think of different ways to reach mm. the people. I, how, uh, how much are you thinking of uh, getting children on board, especially at school level, where they themselves take the message to the families, where you start something, you know, that is going to promote uh, good, li healthy lifestyles and be careful about what you eat, your dietary habits, and of course smoking. Members of the family might be smoking. And if you get the children on board, how do you see their involvement, the school involvement? environment it's it's very 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 important area uh, and there's a lot happening uh, in terms of uh, health working with the schools uh, to School improve health yes, programs, yes yes there's a lot happening uh, uh, we've seen that in the last two years uh, f uh, we've done with education in the health facilities at all levels uh, an assessment was done for grade one uh, school children and uh, so a part of the assessment is to do the assessment by the health providers with, and then uh, to brief, to inform them early detection, inform yes. them of the condition and then to direct them to the health facilities. Uh, so uh, that, that has happened and this is the second year, uh, very much uh, led by the education ministry but working very closely with the health sector. Health sector yes. And then uh, in this year we've seen that uh, uh, adolescent health is very important uh, area again. Uh, very sensitive age group, uh, a lot happening. Uh, there's a lot of social issues happening in the country as well, which is related to the health mm -hmm. again. Uh, so this year, from the health sector again, with the education se sector, we've started an assessment, health assessment of grade seven children. We've almost completed, except for one at all. We've you, done you, the assessment. You assess the the, there's a health assessment done in all the schools for grade seven children at a national level. So the assessment is complete except for one at all. So we would very soon get the we analysis. Get so yes. the, the report will yes. be out on yes. that. Yes, yeah. and uh, we would, e even with this assessment, like the grade one assessment, uh, even though we would get the national dissemination uh, uh, maybe, a, maybe one month after this, um, immediately after the assessment, they would be directed uh, they would be given information on their health conditions and then they would be directed to the health facility. So the care... As, as, yes. 
No, but she's taken this point about adolescence. Yes. I think that's, uh, that's that, is, that is really a big population group in our yes, in society, our society that, that and, and CDs can be a major thing because yeah. they go out and eat a lot outside the home. They smoke a lot. They're on their motorcycles. Drive, Not necessarily ride, the adolescents, ride, but uh, <laughs> the next, next. No, no, <laughs> next then level beyond level. that also, yeah. you're right. It's yeah, an age right. group. But yeah. it's, it's a fascinated, you know, liberated, moving out from childhood to adulthood kind yes. of thing. And that way they are so taken up with the glitter of all these things. And so they don't see anything wrong. But for us to not advise them, and that's the part which is difficult, I think. That's what I'm trying to say, the challenges. How do, for instance, the ministries, other ministries take it, like the transport ministry, or you look at the food and beverage uh, industry, or look at the, when you look at the tourism, for instance, because so many other values are imbibed through these, or the trade, because the foods, the packaged food, we get all that. So because those are also major, major partners for you in the future. Don't you think so? Yes. And uh, uh, that may be something we can... There's a, at a national level, there's a youth health strategy. Uh, mm. This is led, been the, led by the youth ministry, but there's a component for health uh, as well as other sectors. Uh, in the health sector, uh, this last year, we've, rolled, we've worked on uh, adolescent-friendly health services standards. We recognize that uh, Adolescents, when they come to a health facility, if you treat them like any other patient, then uh, it's very difficult uh, to attract mm -hmm. them to the health facility, to give them the right treatment, uh, to make them feel welcome. in a different way. To, yes. to make them yeah. feel welcome. Uh, it, they, it should be it no given doubt in a different way. No you are sitting way. on a very hot seat, yeah. <laughs> because we have got a lot of challenges, obviously, you know, because to plan out something, especially to reach out to all the segments of the community and inviting different agents of the government delivery system into on board it's a challenging task but unfortunately we are running out of time <laughs> uh, we have come to the end of the program thank you very much for appearing with us and sharing your wisdom with us thank you samuel thank you very much thank you for it was a privilege to be here thank you for listening to us and watching us and we hope to see you again soon